Thank you very much. Domo arigato gozaimasu. Since last year, I fell in love with Japan. I'm learning Japanese. Nihango ga skoshi wakarimasu. Started watching anime, learned Japanese, and I'm addicted. I'm going to go tonight to premiere, well, actually, premiere was last night, of an anime I was going to watch last night and I fell asleep. Jet lag. Uh, anyone want to come? Creamia, the best ice cream in the world, is in Japan. I had it yesterday. You can have it. It's also located in this fine city. All right. Originally, this was going to be a presentation and hacking with Andrea Kelfi, who I met last year at Biohackathon. And we've been working on and off uh, remotely on uh, a very neat project. Unfortunately, Andrea can't make it this year, so uh, we're going to have to hack on that next year. Um, so instead, I'm left with at the hackathon, what do I hack about? And last year, instead of doing a lot of hacking, I did a lot of yakking. So it was mostly a yakathon, so I have to figure out what do I want to yak about. And uh, so I was thinking, well, uh, maybe I can yak uh, more about functional programming like I did last year, uh, but also relational programming or constraint logic programming, which is something I do and I didn't really talk a lot about that in that last year. But it turns out that there are lots of people this year who are interested in doing logic programming, sort of logic programming extensions that go beyond what you can do with, say, Sparkle. So I'm very interested in, in that. So Chris, for example, already talked about his Spark uh, prog uh, language. And so the mini Kinrin language I've been working on with many people for the last 15 years, I think, has lots of good overlap uh, there. So Piotr uh, also visited me in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, so we're interested in doing some, some similar work along uh, that way. And also uh, uh, Rule uh, Jamison uh, visited and uh, similarly. So anyway, that's one thing I'm interested in is trying to figure out connections between things like Sparkle. And I'll admit, I don't know anything about Sparkle. I don't know anything about Semantic Web. I read a book on Semantic Web years ago and I hated it. Uh, but I hated Scheme the first time I saw it too, so there's hope for me yet. And I think that RDF might actually be like the S expressions of data science or something. So this seems like something I should love. So yeah, your, your job is to make me love it. Uh, my, my background's in programming languages, particularly functional programming languages, particularly Lisps, particularly Scheme, uh, also Racket. And also I do constraint logic programming, purely functional constraint logic programming, purely relational constraint logic programming in a family of languages called Mini Canary. And Biohackathon is about building infrastructure. We build lots of infrastructures here. Programming languages is about building the infrastructure to build infrastructure, the meta infrastructure. And the only thing better than writing a program is writing a program that writes a program. And the only thing better than writing a program that writes a program is to write a program that writes a program that writes a program. And so forth. So, uh, programming languages teaches you that the future is already here, just not evenly distributed, like William Gibson says. And what I mean by that is uh, that in my experience, and as both an industry researcher and someone uh, in academia, is that uh, common, commonly used programming languages are between 30 to 50 years behind the state of the art. Programming languages research, I think I'm being uh, generous when I say that. So C++ and Java got Lambda uh, about 50 years after Lisp, and Lambda Calculus had that about 20 years before Lisp did. At least, in fact, you can trace this back to these ideas back to around 1920 with Schoenfinkel. Uh, and so if you look at, you know, I just got back from ICFP, International Conference on Functional Programming in Germany, and there you can see topics like dependent types, program synthesis, approval, uh, correct compilers and operating systems. There's a lot of work on mechanized meta theory, proof assistance, things like COC, AGDA, uh, Idris for dependent types. Uh, probabilistic programming languages, like if you've seen languages like Church or uh, Web People or Hakuru, uh, there's a lot of really exciting work that is not going to be seen in industry for 30, 50 years. So the great thing uh, is that if you use advanced programming language technology, this effectively allows you to live 30 to 50 years in the future and do things today that other people will first think of several decades from now. Okay? Uh, and, and just one example of industry impact is that there's a slow move towards immutability. So one of the things that people have figured out 
in academic programming languages is that the way almost everyone programs is fundamentally broken. Uh, so the idea that you have a variable called x, and then you set the variable x to be 5, and then later you set x to be 6, that this is fundamentally broken concept, and this is the foundation for almost all programming languages today, and that turns out to be a terrible idea. Um, I'm only slightly exaggerating, but it turns out that, that if you can avoid that style of programming, you get lots of benefits. You get things like thread safety for free, parallelism uh, will be safe, and so forth. Uh, and anyway, so I'm happy to talk about all these topics, but these are things I care about and will work on. And so there are two projects I was thinking about uh, for this hackathon. And so the first is, uh, I think that uh, bioinformatics tools today are, are built on a foundation of sand. I mean, if, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't be in programming languages, right? So uh, er everything is terrible and broken. Uh, just like the people who believe RDF is the, the, the future, right? Like everything is terrible and broken and not RDF land, land or not as part of land. Well, I believe that also. Uh, just, I'm not sure I believe the RDF part, but I believe that everything's broken and we have to fix it and rebuild everything from scratch. So that's what I want to do. And so I'm going to rebuild everything on top of Lisp because Lisp is the future because it's from 1958, so clearly it's the future. Just like semantic web technologies are old, so clearly it's the future. Uh, maybe Haskell, I don't know, maybe. Uh, probably Lisp. And so, so anyway, so, so one of the projects there, and I've talked to Piotr about this quite a bit, is you know, uh, maybe we start by rebuilding all of bioinformatics by you know, doing something with this graph representation of the genome. So that seems like a good place to start. So that's where we'll start the revolution, maybe. And then uh, the other project I'm interested in is you know, this idea of combining things like mini and purely relational programming, constraint logic programming, with uh, things like Sparkle and RDF. Uh, maybe I'll uh, come to love Sparkle and RDF as a result. Who knows? And one uh, idea I've been thinking about that's uh, maybe anti-RDF and Sparkle, so uh, maybe I'm a heretic, but that's okay, uh, is trying to figure out, does it actually make sense to combine everything? So something that's made me very uncomfortable uh, on this, the projects I work on is this idea that, uh, okay, we're going to take every data source and turn it into RDF, because there's one true way, which is Sparkle and Semantic Web. Or, uh, SQL and relational databases, that's clearly the one true way. So therefore, we have to change everything into you know, these relational database tables. Or graph databases are clearly the way. So we have to turn everything into graphs so we can do Neo4j. Or whatever it is. Okay, so uh, on, on the project I'm working on right now, um, the NCAT's uh, biomedical data translator, by the way, my views do not represent the views of the United States government, um, or the National Institutes of Health. Uh, so, so on that project, uh, we're, we're doing uh, uh, sort of this thing where we take every data source and we turn it into these triples so that we can we can deal with it. Um, and sometimes the original data source was maybe coming from SQL, maybe it was a relational table, maybe it was a graph database, uh, or, or maybe it was triples, uh, and we were converting it to Neo4j and then we convert it back. So we're using like take, take a plain text file and then convert it to Neo4j and then convert it into triples, or we'll do something like take a relational database and then, you know, like, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of throw everything into a blender and then out the end comes a graph database or triples or something. And I'm not sure that that's the best way to do it. Maybe it is. There are advantages of having a common representation for everything, but uh, an, an alternative approach, which I've been thinking about, is what if you had one system that would allow you to do queries like SQL over um, relational database, or Sparkle over RDF triples, uh, or graph database, or data log, uh, those sorts of queries. What if you could do that in one combined system? And so Mini Canron already has a lot of those attributes built in, and so I can imagine building a tool that would naturally allow you to do all of these sorts of queries with the natural data representation without having to do transformations. And so to my knowledge, such tools don't exist, but it'd be interesting to see if that would actually make sense, what would the trade-offs be if you had such a tool? And then the other part, which I understand from the fucking rule, is that when you have something like a, a Sparkle uh, RDF type system, when you want to start doing real reasoning that goes outside of Sparkle, then you have to build some sort of reasoner. And those seem like bespoke items that maybe you have to write in Java, or you have to go you know, to some obscene language like C++ or Python or something like that. And 
uh, well, if you believe in Sparkle and Semantic Web and all that, why should you have to go to Java to write anything? So if we had this uh, a super language where we could do the reasoning inside and also use things like SAT and SMT solvers and probabilistic reasoning and so forth, maybe that would be interesting. You can stay within one world the entire time. What would that be like? Uh, I want to build that. Okay. Thank you.